Hello, yarn tubers. Welcome back to Wanderlust Crochet with Dana and Dooley. Today, I'm going to show you how I make the thermal stitch pot holder. I'm going to be using an H hook, a 5.0 millimeter. I'm going to make some assumptions that you already know how to crochet. You know how to chain, you know how to do single crochet. Um, I'm just going to show you a technique that will make this uh, pot holder so you don't have to fold it over. It works up double thick. And once you get the hang of this, it works up really fast. So what I've done, and remember the pause button is your friend, I have chained 33. You can chain it however long you want. What happens is I'm going to I'm going to single crochet back across, but I'm going to do it in the ninth chain from the hook. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So sure you are, Dana. Single crochet! It's so easy! <laughs> single crochet in the ninth chain from the hook and then single crochet in the rest of the chains across and by chaining 33 and starting in the ninth chain from the hook you've created this loop to hang your pot holder and your pot holder will be 24 stitches wide if you want it wider make your chain wider just start in the ninth chain back from your hook. Now, single crochet all the way back across, and I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so I've got my single crochet all the way back across. I'm going to turn my work. I'm going to chain one. And then, you know, if we were doing a regular stitch, we would do it right in the t right underneath those that teardrop at the top of the previous single crochet. But I'm going to do it a little different. <clears throat> in that last stitch, let's see if I can show you. Okay. I'm going to go in the back loop and we've done stitches in the back loops only I'm sure most of us have and then I'm gonna reach down and go into the the one loop from the chain and I'm gonna single crochet I'm gonna to go to the next stitch back loop only my thumbnail and then I'm going to go down to the chain and insert my hook there and single crochet okay next stitch you know it's it's a little fiddly that's a technical term you know fiddly the first row or two. And I'm going to single crochet like that <clears throat> all the way down. Now, even for those of us who are, you know, we're we're ex we're fairly experienced uh crocheters, some of us. So I've done 3 single crochets. I do think it's a good idea even for those of us who are a little more experienced to put a stitch marker in the first one. Now I don't anymore because I've made hundreds of these. But seriously, the first time you do this pattern, you might want to keep marking those first stitches because they do get buried and you do have to dig them out of there. 
Okay, I'm going to do another couple here, and then I'm going to let you pause the video and meet me at the end. So there's our there's the top of our stitch, and we want the corresponding loop straight below that. It's so easy to get crossways and you know in the beginning I would go in there or I would or I would actually enter in the right loop and then I'd I'd pick up the wrong one on the bottom it took me a very I shouldn't say a very long time it took me a lot of practice pot holders to get this right and quite honestly, you know, I made these pot holders out of necessity because I had absolutely nothing in my kitchen at that time. I owned nothing. I was starting from zero. And I had made myself some very ugly dishcloths that were very practical and very usable because this is 100% cotton, right? That's what we use in the kitchen. And... I found this video showing how to make this pot holder and I studied it and I watched it over and over again. I will link to that video and I will link to her blog where she has this pattern where I learned how to do this. Okay, so one more time I'm going to show you. There's the top of that single crochet. There's the corresponding loop at the bottom. We just want to pick up that one and single crochet. I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so we're getting down to the end here and it's a good idea to identify where that last one is. It's right here, and the corresponding loop is there. Right, 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 right. Okay. It can be so. Okay, I see them. I see them. Where they go? Right there, there, and there. So. And, and you know, unless you're you know you're experienced enough that you can really identify your stitches well this is hard for someone who is still a beginner like I was at the time but boy did this develop my skills and I sold hundreds of these pot holders in sets with dishcloths Okay, get a little more yarn here. So let's, I'm gonna turn my work. I'm gonna chain one and I'm gonna do the same thing. There's the back loop. There's the loop from the previous row. And there's some dog hair in there, lovely. See how now that I'm starting my second row, those two loops that I need to pick up are actually coming together. Do you see that? See, and that's why it gets easier as we go along because there's the top of the single crochet right there. There's the back loop and the loop from the previous row they are starting to come together and it kind of forms what I call a channel. See how they come together? Because, yeah, this is, the, this is the side of the stitch, this is the top of the stitch, and this is that back side. We're going in the back loop and grabbing the loop from the previous row. So it actually gets easier as you go along. love this pattern. Love this. Okay, I'll meet you 
again at the end of this row. Okay, so I have two left. Oh, they just come together so nicely after the first row. And there's my stitch marker. It's in the top of that single crochet. I still need to go in the back loop and find that previous loop. And you're going to find that it's, it's something you kind of got to dig for. There we go. That's what it looks like after row two. But you see how it's it's double thick and those two loops that you have to match up are starting to come together. So I'm going to turn my work. There's my first stitch right there. I'm going to chain one. There's the back loop. And there's the corresponding loop and some dog hair from the previous round. Oh, we love dooley puppy hair. Yeah. Okay. Oops. Don't don't work the tail in. Hello. Oh yeah, like you like you've crocheted before, Dana. Try to look like you know what you're doing. Okay. There's our first one. And look at how close the two are together. See, there's the top of your single crochet in the back loop and the loop from the previous row. It gets easier to find that one and that one. So here's your next single crochet and the top of that stitch and I'm going in the back loop and the corresponding loop from the previous row. See how they're all just lining up right there? They just get easier to find. Oops. Splitty yarn. Splitty yarn. That's a term that uh, my friend Connie and I came up with. Splitty. It's splitty. <laughs> well, it's 100% cotton. It is what it is. So I'm going to show that again. Okay, so the next stitch is right here. Tip it up. Find the back loop and the corresponding loop right below it from the previous round. And boy, those line up nice. It's so fun. Okay. I'll meet you at the end. Okay. So I'm coming along and I've got one, two, three left. Let's do it. Little dog hair. Dog hair. Thankfully, this isn't going to be a gift, or I'm not going to try to sell it because I'm very careful about protecting my work from dog hair in those cases. So, here's the top of that stitch, and I didn't put a stitch marker in it, but there's the back loop and the corresponding previous loop. See what I mean about kind of having to dig those out at the on the very last one? But look at how thick that is. Very thick work. And see what's going to happen in the next row. Let me grab my... I'm going to chain one and I'm going to come in this back loop. And there's the corresponding loop. It's going to go there, and there, whoops, there, and those are the loops we're going to hit. So, 
I'll start this next row with you. Chain one, go in the back loop, and the corresponding loop from the previous row, and single crochet. And now they're all coming together. They form this little channel and they're all lined up. So fun. So fun, so cool. Okay, I want you to do this until it's as tall as you want it to be. And I'll meet you there and show you how, to f how we kind of seal it off at the end. Alright, so I have it as tall as I want it. And I'm ending it on, you know, you just end it on whatever row you choose. I always end it at the opposite corner from my tail that needs to be wove in. <clears throat> so, you see I've got a couple stitches left here. I'm going to finish those up. Two. Then there's one more. I didn't use a stitch marker, but I'm pretty used to digging that last stitch out. There we go. Great. So, that's my dishcloth, and for the last row, I am just going to chain one, and I'm going to go through, I'm just going to, I'm going to use the same two loops, but all I'm going to do is a slip stitch instead of a single crochet. That's how I finish it off. I have seen a couple different ways of finishing this off. This is just the way I do it. There are several tutorials out there. Check out um, I'm going to put the one that I learned from in the description box. Uh, you can also check out Yarn Dragons Creations. Um, I believe Mikey at the Crochet Crowd has figured out the thermal stitch. And um, Creative Grandma, she has a thermal stitch as a stitch of the week. Now, there are a lot of things you can do with this stitch. One thing I did was I took Red Heart Super Saver in very specific colors for a very special friend of mine, and I did a queen size blanket in a thermal stitch took me a couple of months to do it because I think I was using an H hook. I don't remember. An H or an I probably. But that is a big, even though it was Red Heart Super Saver, it's soft. It's a heavy blanket. It is, I mean, I, and it was in her favorite color. Um, I was very proud of that blanket and very um pleased to give it to her such a wonderful big heavy blanket now some people fit like one gal told me that she finishes this off using a crab stitch a reverse single crochet i haven't figured out exactly how she did that but you know experiment with this another thing okay when i sold these sets I would do them in solid colors, all different solid colors, but right about in here, I would put a couple rows of, of white, of just plain white. So there'd be kind of a, just kind of a change in the eye. And, you know, I think I'll, um, I will post pictures in my MeWe group. There'll be a link to that in the description box also of those, um, let me shut off that beeper. Okay, sorry about that. But I will post pictures in my MeWe group of those potholder sets that I sold. Two, three, 
for. Okay, got it. <laughs> sometimes you gotta sometimes you gotta count backwards to get the corresponding loops to go into. But anyway, this is almost done. And I had a lot of people asking so many questions about this pot holder pattern. Um, and once again, yes, I am going to put links in the description box of where I learned this pattern. This gal, you know, deserves all the credit because she taught me this. I've never met her, but boy, do I appreciate her video tutorial and her blog post with the written pattern. Okay, so I'll meet you back here and we'll talk about it after I get the two ends wove in. And here we are. Super functional. Very thick. You can hang it. You can even, you know, if you don't want to do the, you know, skip nine chains for the loop, do it without. Be creative and have fun with this pattern. Um, this pattern has been very important to me over the last several years. So I hope that you have benefited from this tutorial and I pray that you can use this over and over again. They're machine wash and dry. Have fun with this. Make several of them and you'll just get, you'll just get to where you just whip them out. Thank you so much for watching my tutorial. Please like and if you want to see more, subscribe. We're going to have more, so stay tuned. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.